Stop resisting, hands behind your back. Behind your back. Behind your back. Hurry up. Behind your back. Hurry up. Jeremy. Tango 44, one resistance. So that particular night, we were assigned to uh, the Violent Crime Task Force. Um, individuals on a bike going in between cars, uh, which looked suspicious at that time. Um, when I was actually able to roll up next to him, I asked him to stop for a second so I could make contact with him. He continued on. At that point, that's when the chase ensued. Stay on the ground. Hands behind your back. Stop resisting. Hands behind your back. Behind your back. Behind your back. Hurry up. Behind your back. Hurry up. Tango 44, one resist. Tango 44, one resisting. Hands behind your back. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Hello. So what did you throw out on the ground? I did see him get an unknown bag, and he was trying to swallow it, and then he threw it. He at first didn't want to admit to what he threw on the ground. Um, he thought it was going to help his case if we couldn't find it. Once I was able to explain to him that there's kids there that are going to wind up finding the narcotic that he threw, and we didn't want to have a child finding a narcotic the next day that would ingest something. There's kids that live here. If they find this narcotics and they ingest them, that's on you. Do you understand? Do the right thing. If you're honest, that goes a long way with me, believe it or not. It is like a little bit of weed. Is it weed that you threw? Is it a little, it's like a little bit. Because I guarantee you're not running because of weed. No, but it's a little bit of weed. What did you throw on the ground? Is that like the must be or I had narcotics coming, they're going to find it. Just be honest. We continued searching, and uh, at that point, we were actually able to recover the narcotics on the ground, which it did have teeth marks on it. Uh, from when he was trying to bite it. When I ended up telling him that I recovered it, showed it to him, he opened up willingly and started talking about his addiction to heroin. So I don't want to be a heroin. Believe me, I, ooh, believe me, I've tried. I have tried, sir, I've tried. I've been doing it for 23 years and I see people that are normal and I'm like, man, I, wish they were, I was normal like that. I wish I had a car, I wish I had a life. I'm like, look at me, I get stressed out. I'm mean, am I gonna always be a heroin addict? didn't want the addiction, but it's been over 20 years that he's been doing heroin and he needed to mix in the narcotics and sometimes it makes him do things. And that night he was actually wanting to go to jail because he knew he was going down a pretty bad path. Get some help in the jail. That's going to be your best bet is to help break yeah. inside the jail. Yeah, I'm going to have to. Once you're in there, you ain't going nowhere. I don't understand. You're going to break. Use it. Use that time to, to find something to hold on to to get off of that. Try. I wish I would have got help in a different way, but if this is what it took, this is what uh, a common trend with people that are actually going to jail, especially someone in his particular situation where they've been to jail multiple times for a felony narcotic, they shut down because in their eyes they're caught, so it doesn't even matter. You could tell he wasn't too far gone. It kind of struck a nerve with him that uh, he knew what he did was wrong, and the fact that a child may find a narcotic was something that he wasn't willing to risk. So who's this message back? No baby, a hundred for an hour, so it sounds like haggling on her price. No text, no. And I didn't even pay How much my... again, sweetie? None of that is yours? No. All I would want, man to man, is just something to make sense. That's all. That's all I got to say. I mean, I don't, unless you want me to make up stuff. Absolutely not. There you go. What's going on with your husband today? I've noticed he's acting different and strange, and he was addicted, he's addicted to porn. He watches a lot of porn. We were traveling southbound on a uh, military. Individual passes going 85 miles per hour. We, we turned around, initiated our emergency lights and sirens. Once we were able to catch up, the individual accelerated in speed, pushing about 90 miles an hour. Reason for the stop is 85. You're gonna have to hold it here in a second. Looks like he's unveiled. Yeah, he's going. Still getting back on military. Back on military, heading north. Copy, go ahead. Copy, speeds are still live right now in the number one lane. Coming up to Royal Gate. Taking a left, taking a left. He tried to lose us several times by going off the side roads. Um, he uh, looked like he didn't know where he was going, kept his blinker on. Um, finally, when he went about two miles down the road, we uh, he tried to get out of an apartment complex. We were able to get him out at gunpoint. On the ground, on the ground, on the ground, now! On the ground, on the ground, huh? On the ground, hurry up! Do not move! On the ground, hurry up! Hands behind your back! All right, I got one at gunpoint, one at gunpoint. I got it.
Yeah, driver's in custody right now. Why were you running? Because I couldn't, I wasn't made to talk to my wife. Once he was already placed under arrest, his wife actually made the location and uh, shed a little bit more light into the actual situation of the night. Um, he was going through a lot of uh, internal issues within their marriage, um, hinting towards one of them not being faithful and keeping secrets. I've noticed he's acting different and strange, and I started looking into, he was addicted, he was addicted he's addicted to porn. He watches a lot of porn. Okay. So I started searching to see what he was looking at all the time, stuff that he had on his phone, there was ex videos of all this craziness going on. So I said, you know what, this, this can't happen, like I can't talk to you anymore, I no longer want to do it anymore, we're done. When, when we asked him as far as his, where he, what his initial intentions were for that night, uh, he said he was just trying to go home. He's trying to talk to her. I guess out of the arguments that were going on that night, he was allegedly staying away from the house and I guess whatever ensued between their conversation, he wanted to make it to the house to continue on with the fighting. He was very open about what was going on with his relationship and was very determined to let us know that he was not guilty of what she was stating to us. She keeps accusing me, man, that I've been doing porn pages and all this shit, that I've been sleeping with guys and all that. I n I've never been with the dude. Right. Yeah, I've been with girls, but I've never made no porn videos. Okay, so she, how long has this been going on? Since it's been a while, man. She keeps accusing me and accusing me, and every time she calls me, it's to accuse me, and that's it. She said, but I ain't doing none of that. I love my wife, man. He was real adamant about talking about his personal issues with his wife, which we heard, you know, we were trying to keep him calm and we gave him some advice. Next time he gets to a heated argument with his wife to not, not to be driving out of emotion because uh, things could have gone bad for him, especially if he would have hit a pedestrian, hit another vehicle, or even killed himself. Simple, easy. All right. All right, go ahead and start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, All right, go ahead and stop counting. I kind of got interrupted there. License plate comes back to a Cadillac. I initiated a traffic stop on a vehicle that did not match the registration that was uh, displayed. I did get the vehicle stopped. Vehicle, as soon as I exited my vehicle and approached the vehicle in question, the vehicle uh, fled. South on Hackamore, south on Hackamore. Be a silver four door, looks like a Taurus. All right, traffic's light, speed's about 40 miles an hour. Now Looks like vehicle might be occupied one time. Hispanic male. Here we go. We're going in the field. Back in the field. I assumed when uh, our suspect exited the road, I thought it was uh, some kind of back road, maybe an alleyway. My visibility right behind him got cut down to about 50%, so I didn't realize we weren't on a road at all. So when he actually went into the ditch, you know, I just slammed all my brakes. I didn't want to end up in the ditch as well. All right, just bailed, bailed, Hispanic male, black shorts, I'm after. Stop right there! All right, lost him in a ditch. Hispanic male, looks like a teenager. Black shorts, black hoodie. Quickly gave chase, put it out to our dispatch. Helicopter was uh, on scene. Uh, additional units were on scene. A perimeter was quickly established. A yeah, suspect was located maybe five minutes tops. I had interviewed the, uh, the suspect who uh, lost his lunch. You know, and, and just talking to him, I asked him to be honest. Why did you take off? I mean, paranoid? Come on. I don't know. I just didn't even think I could act before I thought. OK. So. It what I I'm gonna I get. I'm gonna let you tell me, okay? Because I'm gonna tell you then what I think. Okay, you left because you were paranoid. I get that. You were scared. Yeah. All right. My concern is what was in the vehicle, because you know what I'm gonna say, right? Yes, marijuana. The what? Yeah, weed. He was apologetic. He understood that he did make a mistake. Um, you know, I felt that he was uh, he was honest about what what he was telling me. You know, I want him to understand that he was 17 years old, and he, it's not too late to turn his life around. You know, you're gonna break big boy laws. Guess where you're going? You're going to big boy Joe. You're 17, you seem like a good kid, all right? You made a big mistake, okay? My advice 
is this is your time to turn it around, okay? Hey, you're lucky you didn't kill anybody, Frankie. You know that? Yes, sir. It's not about just one individual out here. It seems like it's just me. You know, I'm doing this, I'm initiating pursuit, I'm catching the suspects. If I had to guess, you know, we had about maybe 12, uh, 14 guys that all took part in this pursuit. The way I see it, it's a team effort. We got a bad guy off the street, everybody goes home safe at night. You're gonna get maced. Yeah. Do you wanna get maced? No. Then put your hands behind your back. Do you understand? Yeah. I can't believe this. 10, I got him, we're done. No, bullshit. Come on. Come on. I'll get you back. Ah, you can't yell threats like that. Can you calm down for me? You.